All right, everybody, I'd like to introduce our next presenter here at the Planet Microcap Showcase Vancouver. Up next is Dr. Leslie Klein from CECOM Satellite Systems. Dr. Klein, take it away. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, very sparse attendance, but it's better than nothing. Uh, my name is uh, Leslie Klein. I am the president and CEO of CECOM Satellite Systems. Um, the company is a technology company. It's been in business 27 years and publicly traded. I have some legal notice here that nobody probably will pay attention to, but I have to put it up there. Um, the company is uh, technology focused, research and development based. Uh, we are one of the few companies in the world that deliver a fully motorized auto deploy mobile satellite antenna. As I mentioned, established in 1997, publicly traded on the TSX Venture and the OTC QB. We are uh, listed uh, on these exchanges and uh, the, um, the stock price is about $1.31 uh, at the end of August. Now it's a little bit less, goes up and down as everything else in, the, uh, in this market. And the company um, it has roughly about $55 million uh, Canadian uh, market cap. Uh, we are one of the, as I mentioned, one of the few companies in the world that uh, does this type of technology and have been doing it for uh, uh, 20 some, 27 years, 26 years. The uh, company has sold over 10,000 of its antennas in uh, 106 countries. Uh, we have about 600 plus uh, active dealers, partners around the world uh, with 40 different models available and uh, uh, we work with many modem manufacturers, different antenna sizes. Company has about 23 and a half million of working capital as of August 23, and has paid out about $23 million in dividends uh, to shareholders over uh, 46 consecutive quarters. Uh, we have no debt, so we have one of those technology companies that are not looking to borrow money, and therefore very few people actually look at us uh, because they don't. We don't. We don't borrow, so we are off the radar. But uh, we are profitable, we continue to be profitable, continue to pay dividends, about five cents a share uh, over a period of uh, a year. And, um, and we are developing some new and interesting, exciting technology. Uh, the vertical markets that we address really are pretty much wherever internet connection is required. We make it possible to deliver high-speed internet uh, to areas where there is no connectivity or very, very low connectivity available. And uh, we are able to do it with uh, mobility uh, so that our, we can put one of our antennas on a vehicle, drive it into the middle of a desert and uh, push a button and within 20 seconds, you can have high-speed internet access inside the vehicle. So as a result of it, many of our customers are oil and gas companies and uh, other uh, um, remotely operating uh, disaster management companies, cellular backhaul, um, banks, broadcasters, and, and many other vertical markets uh, which require this type of technology. Uh, this is a worldwide deployment of our antennas. You can see that uh, our antennas are just about everywhere, in some places far more than others. Uh, North America and uh, Europe are very heavily populated because of, uh, even though there is a, a lot of uh, activity in terms of uh, availability of broadband in those areas, obviously satellite can deliver far more broadband than terrestrial. And so some, some of the areas where you see a lot of antennas of, of ours uh, are in areas where there's more broadband required than it's terrestrially available. If you look at New Zealand, for example, you can see also that the whole island is packed with our antennas mainly because they are located with uh, disaster management, uh, fire departments, and many other areas where these antennas are used in case of a, a, a major earthquake or a fire where power is lost, where communication is lost. Our antennas operate from the battery of a vehicle, so you can push a button and essentially have internet connection inside the vehicle within minutes. This is just an outline of the number of antennas that we manufacture. They're broken down to driveaways, which sit on top of a vehicle, flyaways, which can be carried in cases, and uh, fixed mobile antennas, which are located in very remote areas like Siberia or northern parts of Canada, where you don't want to send in a technician to a line or a point an antenna 
when something happens. <clears throat> Generally speaking, it takes about two hours to appoint, you know, to align an antenna to the satellite with a satellite engineer and some very sophisticated equipment. We can do it at the press of a button and it does it in minutes and in sometimes in seconds. So in these areas where you would not want to fly somebody in uh, and spend three or four thousand dollars to get a person to those remote areas where connectivity is essential, you can just press a button and the antenna has uh, smarts to align itself back to the satellite and continue continue communicating. So it is a, a, a different type of an application as to compared to the vehicle or a, or a flyaway type of antennas. The, the essence of the, uh, <clears throat> the technology is the controller that is listed that you can see there. It's a, a one button controller that essentially does all the work of a satellite engineer and does it in a much, much faster and much more accurate way than humanly possible. We also have developed a new antenna that you can see called the MEMPAC. It's a, a very small antenna at about 25 kilo that can be carried by one person on the back of a, in a backpack and deployed within five minutes and it will find the satellite within 20 to 30 seconds. We have sold over 400 of these antennas to SoftBank in Japan for disaster management and cellular backhaul. So this is a, the next generation of technology that we have developed and it's selling very rapidly. We have also <clears throat> developed it now for military applications. So we have been successful in selling those antennas to uh, military installations. So this is just an idea of what these antennas look like with diff different configuration, with different satellite operators like Hughes and UTELSAT. And uh, you have uh, also uh, others like Viasat and Yaklik in, uh, in the Middle East. We also have television stations that you would use uh, an antenna such as this one that is used for transmitting television uh, broadcasts immediately from locations to the studio. And we have sold quite a number of these all over the world. Uh, as I mentioned, we are in 106 countries and uh, uh, we, we sell through resellers. So we have, a, a, for example, a Pakistani TV station has about 50 of these antennas deployed uh, in in uh, in Pakistan for their reporters to drive around in vehicles and and stream video from from uh, far away locations back into the studio so this is a typical flyaway antenna it consists of a number of cases where you can uh, the whole antenna packs into these three cases the reflector is cut in half so you can actually put it put it into one case because it's a very large reflector and uh, <clears throat> It can be very rapidly transported uh, and assembled without any tools. So it requires no knowledge. It essentially is like a Lego set. You put it together, snaps together, the controller is plugged in and it finds the satellite uh, very rapidly and you can then disassemble it very rapidly and move on to the next location. So this is the man pack that I mentioned uh, before. It's a, fits all into, it's a carbon fiber, 24 kilo, a product, it fits right into that backpack and you can carry it with you. We have been successful in, as I mentioned, selling it to the military now. So we have uh, militaries in, in uh, Asia and uh, also in Japan who are, using, uh, who are using these antennas for military applications. It's, a, it's a rainproof uh, IP66, so it means it can be sitting outside uh, in the rain and operate uh, remotely or operate with a, with a Wi-Fi. You can actually put it together using a Wi-Fi. The commands are on your laptop, so you could also, or your, or your phone, you can activate the antenna uh, very rapidly and uh, you can carry it and uh, put it together again like a Lego and uh, carry it with you uh, on, the, on, the, on your backpack. So this is the military version of it that I mentioned. We just uh, sold uh, about 30 of these to different uh, militaries. And we hope that this will start a new new market for us, which uh, we are not uh, previously have not been involved in. Here's an example of the Rockies, for example, where this uh, antenna has been used to uh, to uh, produce a television commercial. So it can be carried up to the mountain, and uh, with the solar panels or with batteries operated from there and uh, stream video right into the studio for somebody to to edit and uh, and. Uh, give immediate information back to the crew as to what, what they are doing or how should they be doing it. And it can be easily assembled 
as you can see, it's in uh, in in, uh, in a film production in a video. Actually, it was a commercial that they used it for. Here are some other examples that I'm going to give you. You can see uh, in Japan there was a disaster, a flood. Uh, you can see the uh, antenna used as a cellular backhaul and used in, in many other management, uh, disaster management type of applications. So it, it is it is one of the most advanced products out there, and uh, it's selling extremely well. Different vertical markets. Um, here you can see oil and gas around the world, <clears throat> from the U.S. to Libya and uh, China, Australia. Satellite news gathering, as I mentioned, you can see different television stations that are using it. Some actually carry it in a helicopter to be delivered to a remote location and then broadcast from there. Others are on vehicles uh, permanently installed or in other transportable structures. Emergency response fire departments in Japan, China, and Russia, <clears throat> for example, are using these. So we also have in Osaka, Japan, we have one fire station that has 25 of these antennas for disaster management uh, in Japan. And uh, we have uh, sold, uh, as I mentioned, 400 to SoftBank in Japan for cellular backhaul when they lost all their uh, cell towers during the tsunami in um, Sorry, yeah, during the tsunami in, in 2011 in, in the Fukushima disaster. Telehealth, we also have mobile uh, ambulances uh, and that have antennas, our antennas on them. We have a breast uh, cancer screening unit in New Zealand. Again, these are very, very useful uh, communication devices that are used in remote areas so that people, for example, in remote areas of New Zealand can have a breast cancer screening done, they don't have to go to uh, the next major city and travel four or five hours. This vehicle can uh, do it for them, transmit the data to the hospital and get a report back within minutes. The military is a big user. We have customers in China, Russia, Canada, uh, and NATO forces in, in Europe and Vietnam and, and other places where they use these type of antennas. Telecom uh, is, as I mentioned, cellular backhaul is very big from Malaysia to uh, Fiji to AT&T in the UK and the uh, and, uh, United States, China Telecom and many others use the antenna for cellular backhaul. Mobile offices, we have the e-commerce uh, government pension. Uh, for example, in South Africa, they print pension checks from these vehicles in remote areas of South Africa. <clears throat> We also have uh, passport printing in Argentina using multiple vehicles, and it makes it possible for them to deliver services, uh, government services around the world to people who need them in remote areas. Mobile banking, that's another interesting uh, ATM uh, type of application in different parts of Africa, South Africa, New Zealand, uh, uh, are, are, uh, we also have the, in Hawaii uh, these antennas operating 24 by 7 uh, to deliver cash to tourists. And uh, many for many uh, companies like Numix in Malaysia who are selling these to banks over there to uh, deliver mobile ATM services. So SICAM over the last five years ago, we have started a, a new research and development project with the University of Waterloo. As you know, uh, everybody is getting into the satellite business uh, from Musk and uh, Bezos, uh, from Amazon and uh, from uh, SpaceX uh, um, and uh, Boeing and Telesat and many others are entering this market, uh, developing constellations, uh, spending billions of dollars. So we have uh, 17, sorry, five years ago, we have started a project at the university to develop an antenna that would uh, make it possible to get these constellations working in uh, terms of mobility and uh, using electronically steered uh, phased array antennas, which will be required because these satellites are in constant motion and uh, they deliver uh, a, lot of, a lot of bandwidth. So you need uh, an antenna that can track these uh, satellites while you would be moving. So, so you could put it on a, on a plane or a, or a car or a boat uh, train, et cetera, and be able to track these satellites as they move overhead. So SICOM has developed this uh, revolutionary patented, uh, we have seven patents that we received for this antenna. You can see it beside a Canadian quarter. It's a 16 element antenna, so it essentially has 16 radiating elements 
And when you combine them together, you create a larger antenna of 1,000 or 4,000 elements. And we concluded a successful test in 2021 with uh, Telesat, uh, over the Telesat service using this, this antenna. And now we are in the final stages this year of putting together a, a four times larger antenna than this uh, that will be electronically steered and capable of delivering high-speed broadband over these very large constellations of hundreds and thousands of satellites. So the antenna itself is conformal. It can, um, it can actually optimize the beam. It can, it's scalable, so you can make it as large or as small as you require. And uh, it, it, it can beam steer, which means that it can uh, move the beam in the direction of the satellite that's flying overhead. And so this is how you put them together and you build a, a larger antenna. And uh, it, it's about, it's about uh, two or three um, uh, inches high. Uh, the antenna, it's, it's very small. It's relatively speaking to a parabolic antenna and it delivers uh, high speed broadband over the highest frequency available from these uh, constellations that are, that, that are being deployed. SICOM has also received a number of patents on some specialized materials that will be used in the next generation of these antennas. <clears throat> these will reduce the cost and the power consumption of the, uh, of the uh, antennas themselves. And uh, we, are, we are testing these also, and, and we have received a number of patents on, on these uh, devices that will be part of the phased array antenna as, as a beam formers. So here you can see a parabolic antenna, and beside it you can see an electronic antenna, just the two panels, the transmit and receive panels. How, how different they are from a, a physically large parabolic antenna compared to a, a phased array type of an antenna, which, which is shown there. One is, a, one is a transmit panel and one is a receive panel. Now these are going to be a little larger than what you see, but there still are a huge difference in terms of weight and size of what's uh, available today and what will be available in the, in the future. <clears throat> the market uh, is a very large market. It's going to be a $20 billion market uh, in the next uh, number of years. As you can see here, the total flat panel uh, shipments will go from 30,000 in 2021 to uh, millions in 2031. And so we hope that Seacom will be one of the companies that will be taking advantage and, and benefiting from this enormously uh, large market. Here is another <coughs> a graph that shows the uh, flat panel uh, antenna um, uh, penetration compared to the existing uh, antennas, the parabolic antennas that are in, the, in, in service today, which are the standard antennas that have been around for 50 years or so. So this is the first large um, change in the satellite uh, equipment business, and it's going to be transformational uh, over the next number of years. So here is the antenna that I mentioned before that has been developed, tested, and uh, now in its final stages of manufacturing. And uh, essentially, you can see this is what it would look like on a vehicle. This is what it would look like on a train. These are simulations. So, and this is what it would look like on an aircraft. So this is, uh, this is the technology that we are, that we are fi final, finalizing. And uh, it will generate many, hopefully many uh, additional revenues for SECOM because the antenna is modular, so you can make it as small as possible for tractors and, and other missiles and, and other type of uh, flying devices and, and, and uh, uh, IoT type of uh, applications where this type of technology will be required to connect to the multiple thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit. SICAM is also developing in conjunction with some partners of of the University of Waterloo and semiconductor manufacturer, the next generation of uh, high frequency millimeter communications. This, this uh, picture shows you how uh, uh, um, HAPS, which is a high altitude platform, can fly <clears throat> within 300 kilometer radius and deliver high speed 6G communication to the ground, to a phone without the use of cell towers. So this is the next generation of cellular type of communication where our antenna would be located in the HAPS in this, in this plane and communicate with the satellite up and down and also deliver high-speed broadband to the fiber network um, using some of these chips that the semiconductor manufacturers are going to be developing. So we are working, we are in the final stages of testing this technology also 
and uh, working with the semiconductor manufacturers who will be making the um, in integrated circuits for the phones, for the future sixth generation phones, where you will be able to deliver up to 400 kilometer radius uh, uh, 6G communication at a very high frequency and uh, very low cost because you eliminate all the cell towers on the ground. So this is essentially, um, uh, there is a link in my presentation that shows you this, this uh, technology that is being developed by SoftBank in Japan and uh, a number of other companies that are working on this and we would be providing the antenna for these planes that are essentially very large unmanned uh, uh, aircraft that operate uh, for three months on solar, solar energy uh, flying at a very high altitude. That's my presentation. I hope uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes. What do I say? What do I think of the Rogers deal with with uh, with Shaw? It's a cellular deal. We don't we don't get involved in that at all. We are in the satellite communication business, not in the cellular business at all. Ultimately, we will be involved, but again, only as a provider of the antenna, not the service, just the hardware side of it. And uh, so I don't know much about the cellular market in terms of how big it is and who the players are, other than you know, the typical Rogers and, uh, and the Shaw, Shaw uh, merger that's happening, uh, but I don't have an, an, an opinion by myself on that. No, unfortunately, I don't know much about that either. Any other questions? Antenna. We are, we are, yes, we are testing it. Yeah, the plane is already manufactured by SoftBank. It's already been tested. There's multiple planes. SoftBank, the Japanese company. Yeah, and uh, we already have. Uh, we have. A, we are finalizing this uh, this uh, this, uh, this uh, technology with uh, that was funded by the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. So we are doing the final test this year finishing the, the, the design. So the semiconductor manufacturers are finishing their design of the chipset. And this is the next generation, 6G. It's not 5G, it's 6G. And they are going to be providing the chipset to the phone manufacturers who will be able to deliver this technology with the HAPS and uh, our antenna to, you know, to, uh, to Tarcos, essentially. So now we have three minutes. Yes. No, no. Star Starlink is a is not a cellular service. Starlink is a, a broadband service, so it's a completely different service. But they cannot communicate to cell phones. We're communicating to cell phones. Yes, not not our technology. Our antenna will be used. With the with the manufacturers of the chipset for the 6G, who will be selling it to the telcos. And the, the beauty of this is that uh, you, the the um, the HAPS plane is about a million dollars, and uh, there would be three of them. You you would have a spare, and two of them constantly up uh, at 20 kilometer height, uh, flying around 300 kilometer uh, radius, and be able to communicate without. Uh, cell towers, so you eliminate 300 to 400 million dollars worth of cell towers. So that's where, the, that's where the beauty of this whole solution comes in, that you can eliminate the cell towers and you would never have cell towers in some areas because there's just no justification for them. But this solution will allow you to cover a large area with some population or, or significant population that is segmented in such a way that you would not put antennas into you know uh, cell towers into those areas. Yeah, yeah. You you ultimately could, but obviously already the cell towers are here, so you wouldn't do that. But if you look at north of uh, 40 degrees and south of 40 degrees, there's hundreds of millions, if not more, people available for this type of service, 
and 6G is going to be 100 times more than 5G in terms of bandwidth. So that's where the technology goes from. So the competition is, is nebulous at the moment, especially in the phase array area. In the, uh, in the um, existing uh, antenna uh, services that we are providing, there's two or three manufacturers similar to us, but we are kind of segmented. One of them is Cobam, one of them is General Dynamics. So they are big boys, but they mainly deal with uh, military. So they don't, uh, their product is not capable because of the cost uh, delivering uh, consumer or commercial, I should say commercial applications. So we never see them, you know, we don't, we don't compete for the military market and they don't compete for the commercial market. So, and, and there are, that's all there is, you know, it's a, it's a very segmented, very uh, niche type of a market. That's why our sales are up and down, you know, throughout the year because of uh, depending on disasters and depending on what customers are looking for, uh, you know, the sales cannot, they're not steady. So that's why we have some years with $20 million in sales and some years with $12 million in sales because of this market. But now with, we are entering this military market with a very specialized uh, technology that we have. And we believe that because of the cost, our antennas are about half the price of a military uh, spec product. So we will be able to garner some new markets in the military area. But of course, the, the, big, the big opportunity will come from the phased array antenna market. That will be, that's a $17 billion antenna market by itself for this type of uh, applications. It's, it has not changed very much. It has grown, already, you know, the, the company has been profitable for 20 some odd years, paying dividends for, you know, 46 quarters. So it's, it, we are still making money. I mean, we, we, our margins are like 60, 65%. So we don't have to sell much. We have only 33 people. So we can really go for a long, long time with what, what we have. Even, even on the worst conditions, if you make six or $7 million a year in sales, we still break even. We don't have to do much, but some orders, as I, we just released uh, orders of $3 million. So we get an order for $3 million. So we, we, we are okay for the rest of the year, just with one, one order. So it, it, it's, a, it's possible to do with a small number of people and very low overhead. Any other questions? Well, it's the, yeah, it's the new technology. It's the phased array antenna technology. That will, yes, it will generate uh, significantly, um, hopefully significantly more revenue because it will also enter the, the vertical markets that we are not in today, like aero and marine and, uh, and military and many others that these phased array antennas will be used, which we are not presently servicing, no. More revenue, yes, yes, the, yes. The next 24, 24 months, yes. And of course, the, the the technology itself is segmentable in in a way that we can sell it to many other uh, integrators. So we don't have to sell just the antenna, but the technology could be also sold. Praise the yes. It's, it's, it's not unique in terms of, uh, but it's a different design than some other companies that are making. And uh, so far, nobody has really come out with a, a phased array antenna in the KA band frequency that we are developing. KU is available from uh, Star Starlink, but it's a closed circuit, closed network. It's only theirs. They are not selling whatever technologies they have to anybody else. So. Yes, it, it is. It is. We, we developed it uh, two years ago. We tested it. It's being put together as we speak. It should be the first product should be available this year for testing. Any other question? 
the products are manufactured, uh, the existing products that we sell to them are manufactured in Canada. All of it is manufactured in Canada, in Ottawa, in the Ottawa region. The uh, phased array antenna, because of its complexity, the first, the first one is being built in Taiwan because there's nobody in Canada who can actually build it. But we hope to find somebody in Canada who will be able to, to build it for us because we want to build it in Canada. Yes. There's always a concern with trade secrets, but uh, we have some some of the, the ideas patented and there's a lot of software and firmware that is pretty difficult to copy. So it's it's uh, so far we have had no problem in 20 some odd years, we have developed unique technology and we have had no problems with it, but it's always a concern. Thank you.